Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to talk about Angular on push change detection. On push change detection is faster than standard Angular change detection, but it's also trickier to use, so there is a trade-off going on here. Let's have a look at on push change detection in action. We are going to start with this example that we have built on our last lesson, where we have here the key app event getting detected, triggering here the on title changed method that is mutating directly the course object, which is an input to the course card. Even though we are directly mutating here our plain JavaScript object, Angular will still correctly reflect here the result on the screen because Angular in default change detection is comparing the previous values here of the course description expression with the current latest value and if it detects a difference then Angular is going to update the view. Let's now switch here to a different change detection strategy. We're going to head over here to our component and we are going to specify here that we are now going to use on push change detection. Let's now try this out to see what happens. If we now start editing here the title of the course, we are going to notice that still we have here the same result. So it looks like on push change detection is still working exactly the same way as default change detection. And indeed, in this particular example, they work exactly in the same way. So this is a similarity between the two types of change detection. Both mechanisms are triggered in response to an event handler. So in both these situations, Angular is going to make sure that the latest value of the model gets reflected here on the view. Let's now see a scenario where the two change detection mechanisms work differently. Let's head over here to our application component and this time around let's try to mutate the course object but let's not mutate the course object from an event handler from inside the course card component. Instead, let's quickly create here a div with a class demo and let's add here a button. We are going to give some text to the button. We are going to add here the edit course button and in response to a click on this button, we are going to be mutating the course object and change, for example, the title of the course. So when this button is clicked, we are going to add here an event handler. We are going to call it on edit course and let's quickly implement it here at the level of the application component. We are going inside this on edit course method, access here the courses array. Let's say that we access here the first position of the array. So this is going to be the first card here on the screen and we are going to mutate here the value of the description of the course, we are going to try to assign here a new value. So let's now try this out. We are going to reload our application and we're going to see what happens whenever we click on edit course. So if we click now on edit course, we are going to see that even though we changed here the description of the course to a completely different value, that change has not been reflected on the view. As you can see, we have here a view synchronization issue, which is being caused by the use of the on push change detection. In order to confirm that that is indeed the case, that the change detection mechanism is what is causing this problem, let's reload here our application using the default change detection mechanism and this time around whenever we click on edit course, the value of the course title is getting reflected correctly on the view as expected. If we activate again on push change detection and we click here in our edit course button, we can see nothing is happening. So this confirms that it's indeed caused by the use of on push. So the question is what is going on here and how can we use this change detection mode? We know that it's faster, but we can also see immediately from this example that in many situations is going to be a bit harder to reason about if we don't take certain precautions while building our application. As we can see with default change detection, even if you click here on a button at the level of the application component, Angular is still going to go down the whole hierarchy tree and check all child components to see if an event triggered at the level of the parent component also by any chance change the data that would affect the view of the child components. On the other hand, while using on push at the level of the course card, we can see that this course card will not get 
updated if some parent component accidentally mutates the data that the course card is displaying. We can already see that one of the features of on push change detection is that a part of the component tree is not traversed and checked for changes under certain circumstances. We can clearly see that these cards here by some reason are not getting checked for changes in the data model. But the question now here is, how does this work exactly? Well, let's continue here our example. So going back here to our edit course button, let's try something different. Instead of mutating here the description of the courses object directly, just mutating the JavaScript object, let's see what would happen if we would create here a copy of the courses object. Let's then start by creating here a reference to the object that we want to modify. So as we know, we want to modify the first item of the courses array. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define here a new variable called new course. This new course will contain the new value for the description and this new course object is a copy of the course object. So we're going to create here a copy using here the object spread TypeScript notation. Now that we have here a new copy of the course we are going to mutate the copy. So the difference here is we are not mutating an existing object that already existed inside the array, instead we are mutating a copy that we have just created. And we're going to assign it here the new value. We are going to add here the any type so that we don't get here a compilation error. Now that we have here our copy of the course that has been mutated and modified with a new description, what we're going to do is we are going to assign in this position of the array the copy that we have just created, so the new course variable that we have available here. Now let's see how this works. So there's a big difference here. We are not mutating an object directly. We are going to create a copy in order to add here a new description. If we now click here on the edit course button, we're going to see that this time around the new value is getting reflected on the screen. Based on this example, we can see that the course card component got re-rendered on the screen whenever one of the input values of the component has changed. So before we did not change the input of the component, instead we were mutating directly a nested property in the course object, but the course object itself was exactly the same, only one of its properties were being mutated. In that case, on push did not trigger a new re-render of the view. But in this new case where we created here a copy of the courses object, so essentially we provided here to the course card a completely different object, so we got here a completely different input to a different JavaScript object, this time around we got here a successful re-render of the view and we have displayed here the new value on the screen. So let's quickly summarize how on push change detection works from what we have seen so far. First, one of the main differences is that if our component is using on push, then Angular is not going to try to detect changes on the input data by analyzing each of the expressions of the template. Instead, Angular is going to try to detect changes in the input data of the component. We have also seen that if an event handler gets triggered, then on push change detection is going to be triggered, just like the case of default change detection. And the reason is the same, if an event occurred, that naturally might have modified the data, so we now need to check if some of the components need to be re-rendered in response to it. We can see why the on push change detection mechanism will result in a better performance than default change detection. With default change detection, we are checking all the expressions of all the templates in the component hierarchy tree every time that there is an event anywhere on the application. We have to do that because we are not given any guarantees that that event on a parent component might have modified data, which is important for a child component. So we have to check everything. All the expressions of all the component tree. This also means that we need to keep in memory the values of the expressions that were calculated on the previous change detection run. On the other hand, with on push, if we know that the inputs of a given branch of the component tree have not changed, then we can skip the whole branch entirely. So if this course card component would have child components, those child components would not be checked for change detection if 
the course card component did not have itself some changes passed to it, so a whole branch of the component tree gets bypassed. Also, in the case of input data such as, for example, JavaScript objects such as the course object, we are comparing the data that gets passed by object reference. So the comparison itself is much faster. When using on push, we need to make sure that we don't mutate the object data that gets passed to a component. When we are using on push change detection, we have to make sure that the data that we pass as an input to a component does not get mutated directly by other components, such as, for example, the parent component. The best way to avoid this situation is to use immutable objects. As we can see, on push change detection is effectively faster, but it's also a bit trickier to use. Let's now continue to dive deeper into the Angular on push change detection mode. Let's now talk about how to handle observable data streams with on push.